Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Mom's Favorites Books My Mother Loved, a memorial for my mother, and it is almost but not quite appropriate uh, to be doing this particular book uh, at this time. My mother's birthday was mere, was mere days ago, and the anniversary of her death is upcoming, so it's an oddly appropriate time, although I suspect not wholly appropriate, to do this book. Um, because it's, in a way, it's more a, a book that is like my mother, as I remember her, than any of these other books, um, which the other books open windows for me into who my mother was in ways that I didn't know her. Um, you know, all of us as children have parts of our parents that we never really get to see because our parents are our parents. Um, but I have mentioned in the past that my mother had certain psychological, psychiatric difficulties after a certain point in her life, and it was relatively early on in mine, and it, it skewed our relationship in some particular and unfortunate ways. But... My Life in France by Julia Child is a book that, yes, it's among the books that my mother uh, loved, at least I can't imagine her not, and my father put it on this list, so I'm assuming it must have been, but Julia Child was intensely formative for my mother. Um, my mother loved cooking. Uh, she loved talking about food, she loved eating good food, she loved discussing food, and, and one of the things, one of my distinct memories of her is even as she became more and more ill and unable to do things, was talking her uh, home care assistance people into helping her make muffins because it was cooking that she could do, even if it was just standing over somebody's shoulder and making them do things for her she was still getting to cook still. Um, and Julia Child was a very central figure for my mother in terms of forming her tastes and her views. And the thing about Julia Child is that Julia Child is intensely formative as a general cultural figure. If you have ever watched a modern cooking show, and I'm not talking about one of those idiot things where somebody gives somebody five packets of ketchup and four peanut butter sandwiches and tells them to make a gourmet meal that includes these items. And I'm not talking about ridiculous competitive shows, uh, and I'm not talking about the cake wars or any of those other things. I'm talking about a show where you get a professional, a professional cook or chef who stands in front of the camera and says, I'm going to make a thing today, here's how you make this thing. And Julia Child is the progenitor of doing these things. Julia Child's uh, cooking show, uh, which was spurred by uh, the book that she wound up writing with her fellow authors, Bertolt and Beck, um, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, that that book got her onto television and got her uh, this show, which was completely an experiment because nobody had done cooking shows that were really at all successful before. And so Julia Child has shaped the way we do television in many ways. Uh, so my mother would have fundamentally been interested in this book solely because it was about somebody who was an idol and an icon to her. Um, this book is a constructed memoir of Julia Child's years living in France, but in Europe generally, since it's clear that they spend a certain, that she and her husband Paul spent time living in uh, Germany and in Norway, and neither of those, shockingly, are France. Um, and this is an interesting book because it's a memoir, and but it's a memoir that was reconstructed out of letters, and it's a memoir that's filled with pictures that were taken by Julia Child's husband, Paul Child, 
And the photographs in this book, in a lot of ways, reflect the idiosyncrasy of this book. There's a lot in this book that is individual personal memories of just stuff that happened in life. And we see here a picture of their cat, Minette, and uh, that cat hanging out on the counter uh, in, their, in their kitchen in 1950s France. That's very much an aspect of this book. The the incidents of feeding the cat, uh, you know, chicken that had been made for people and having the cat be one of the critics and the people who stop by and the idiosyncratic things that, uh, that Julia did with her sister, they fit, uh, they're, they're very much part of this as much as her memories of food and memories of food art make up a very significant portion of this book. Uh, Child spends a lot of time discussing, you know, that wonderful thing that we ate in this place and that wonderful technique about cooking I learned from this person. There's a lot of food in this book. Um, it is not a book of recipes. It is a memoir. If you want recipes, she published books of recipes. One can look those up. I assume one can also look up old episodes of her show. Uh, I mean, everything is on YouTube, even if that's probably still in violation of copyright. Other things are more artsy. Uh, Paul was a photographer. Her husband, Paul, was a photographer, not professionally, um, but it was an aspiration of his. It was a hobby. It was a calling. He had several of his photographs were, and this is mentioned in the book, photograph. Pho purchased by uh, the Museum of Modern Art uh, in New York. So, you know, he wasn't a slack photographer, and there are a lot of photographs that are like this one that we see of the Eiffel Tower that are these slightly off-kilter, artistic, interestingly angled photographs that they're atmospheric, that they're about capturing the flavor of of life in France, and large portions of the book are like this too, where she talks about the experience of just being in Marseille, the experience of living in Paris, of traveling through all these parts of France, and and the experience of actually being there and seeing people, and yes, there does tend to be a lot of cookery in around that too, but it's experiential, and it's it's a different thing than the down-home bits of, of personal experience that we get in other parts of this book. A lot of it, of course, is taken up with her memories of cooking. It's taken up with her memories of learning at the Cordon Bleu and how that happens. It's uh, her experiences at meeting Louisette and Simca and getting to know these two women and getting onto the path of writing that first book that eventually became Mastering the Art of French Cooking. The way that they discussed things, the way that they pushed each other and and drove each other and inspired each other and how each of them had a different quality or part in in development, in figuring out recipes, in deciding what to do with things. And so we have Julia Child in the center because she was over six feet tall and her two friends with her. And cooking, the the discussion of cooking and cooking techniques and these friendships and the writing of the book is all, of course, very, very central to what she's talking about. Another thing that's very important, of course, is her relationship with Paul. And in the middle of the book is a collection of Valentine's Day cards that they made um, that they had apparently, according to this book, found themselves having difficulty getting their Christmas cards out on time. So instead, every year they would send out Valentine's cards to everybody. And the... The affection that Julia had for her husband, it's 
it's written all over this book. Um, not just in the fact that this is a book that's constructed out of her and his letters. Letters, however, that they apparently used to sign as, they frequently apparently signed as Pulia, that is Julia and, and Paul. Um, but that the two of them were very much in love and very much saw the world in the same way and went through things in the same way and loved many, many of the same things. And that this was a romance made out of two people who just fit together perfectly. And so you have this... You have this this quality of it that is written all the way through this, not in so many specific ways, but in small incidents in the way the way that we see so many so few arguments between them brought up and and it's a lovely undercurrent through the whole of this book. And of course, finally we have the fact that uh, that Julia Child, of course, eventually, with her friend Simca Beck, that they eventually did publish this first book, and Julia Child got that first television series. And that this period of her life in France, it, in a lot of ways, it closes... This, this book ends with with a closure and ending of her life in France that that you know her husband is now no longer physically capable that he suffered uh strokes and and a minor heart attack and he has had to be put into uh he's had to be go to a retirement home simply because he could no longer travel could no longer do the things he once did and she's having to leave behind the home that they had purchased in France and that had been a place that they had lived in a lot. Um, and it closed a chapter on her life. And this book ends in its way in a very, very positive way because this this book doesn't end with with sadness so much as that moment when one part of your life ends and you take a step into the next one and and so this this picture is again representative of that part of it the fact that her you know that she had met her husband and they had both been working for the government during the second world war that they had had all this time in france during which her husband had been working again as a government employee and she had been just learning this cooking thing and developing this cooking thing and and at the end you have uh you have her having developed this career that she had built into that that was hers and uh it's 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 an interesting ending point to the book because, of course, my life in France and this is the end of the time that she could say she was living in France. And so it's it's a very particular specific thing. And but the the ending period of the book is very much about her developing her professional career Um I mean, there's also a lot of sad stuff about the fact that the end of this book is is in the 90s is and you have to remember that she was in her 30s in the 1940s in you know in in coming into the 1950s you're talking about a time when everybody that she knows she's hit that point in her life when when your friends start to die um and so there is a very there is a sadness to the end of the book but it it was it was determined and hopeful and and this book is very very much how i remember my mother uh so 
Uh, before I work myself into a spate of tears, and because my timer is running out, that's all I have to say about this, so I will see you all next week.